Oh, hello there, and how are you today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. Oh, and me? Oh, I'm vertical and still breathing. Thank you for asking. <laughs> now, if you've been keeping count, and of course you know that I never keep count, then you'll know I've been in quarantine for 60 weeks now. Imagine that. One year and eight weeks. Oh, and my second vaccination, you ask? Well, I have some news to share you with you on that. Uh, drum roll, please. I've just been notified of an appointment later this afternoon. Hmm. I wonder if that means I can get rid of the bell and that sign that says, Unclean, unclean. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> but you know what? Now there's talk of a third vaccination for all the variants they've discovered. <laughs> Isn't technology wonderful? So when will it all end, I wonder? <laughs> well, in the meantime, I've not been idle. I made an escape to New Zealand. It was Peter Bevington who made the request and the suggestion. Now he lives close to Wellington and he asked me to make a flight from Wellington to Queenstown. That's a place in the South Island. So I bought an excellent airport scenery for Wellington, but I was only able to find a freeware version for Queenstown. Still, I think you'll find they work very well indeed. Now, I made a flight and recorded it a couple of days ago and discovered something which I had long suspected. P3D is pretty awful when it comes to their artificial intelligence engine running the ATC, the air traffic control. <laughs> In fact, it is really dire. Now, let me show you why I say this. Here is the approach chart for runway 23 at Queenstown. The route, as you can see here, follows a twisting valley with mountains on either side. It's somewhat similar to the one of the approaches at Innsbruck, for those of you who've done that. Now, any respectable ATC would direct an inbound aircraft along that route for safety reasons, if for nothing else. But what you're seeing on screen now is the Navigraph recording of the route that the ATC in P3D gave me for an IFR approach and landing. Just look at that. They vectored me all over creation. At one point, when I was on an actual final, I was instructed to climb, not descend, which made no sense at all. Now, I've noticed this before when filing an IFR. The program's ATC uses a zigzag plan when getting close to the destination. And if you want to see another example of that, have a look at the last part of the video I posted for the flight from LAX to Las Vegas. And you can see the same thing there as you see here. The bottom line is this. I don't mind filing an IFR plan for departure, but it's best to cancel that IFR as you begin your descent. And that is what I did with this video. I actually made two flights and two recordings. The part up to the end of the fast forward section was recording number one. 
and the Navigraph clip you just saw was part of that. And then the part from the fast forward section to the landing is the second recording. I just did a bit of, you know, magical editing joining the two together. So I'm going to look into getting a decent ATC program that would be more realistic and I'll give you a report on my findings later. Now I can give you an update on wide view and wide traffic. They are working very well indeed now and I have proper traffic to contend with. In fact, in the second video run I made from Wellington, I was third in line to take off. Third. That's how well it's working. Now, about today's flight. I discovered that Air New Zealand flies regularly between Wellington and Queenstown. The flight number is NZ603. Now, they use an Airbus A320, but we are Ryanair, and we use 737-800s. <laughs> I'll be departing from stand 73 at Wellington and arrive at what I think is stand Romeo 6. It's a little hard to say as the airport scenery is only freeware after all. And while it is remarkably good, it's not detailed enough. Now, as before, I will detail the pre-flight preparation and then the cockpit preparation before the flight. And to assist you to get to the part that you want to see, I've added chapter points below in the description box. So thank you Mr. Bebbington for your excellent suggestion and your wonderful invitation to visit New Zealand. I did enjoy it, so I hope you approve. So we now know which route we're going to take. We're going to be following Air New Zealand. And let's have a look at what FlightAware has to say about this. This is showing a historic flight. And here is the route that they took. But there's the gate departure and the takeoff times that they had. Taxi time was nine minutes. According to this, the aircraft type is an Airbus A320. Well, we're a little bit bigger than that with the 737, but we're going to follow that same route. The altitude they flew was 36,000 feet. The actual distance is 367 nautical miles, and there is the route that they took. So let's have a look at the weather conditions down in Queenstown, New Zealand. We don't have any meta data available for Queenstown, but we can see here the wind direction. And according to the meteogram on the left-hand side, it looks like the wind is coming from the west gusting to 23. So that's going to be interesting. Let's have a look at the runway information. Well there it is. So if I was a betting man I would say that we would probably be coming in on runway runway 23. All right now then let's have a look at Wellington. Ah, uh, here the wind is blowing quite strong. It's showing VFR conditions at the moment, but not too long ago it was minimums. Looking at the runway, yes, it does look like we would be departing from runway 34. Now let's go in and make our flight brief. Here we are. So, airline is Ryanair, so that's RYR. Flight number is 186. 
We're departing from New, Z uh, New Zealand's Wellington, so it's NZWN. And we're going to go to NZQN. Oh, it's giving us an alternate of going back to Wellington. And we'll put in our aircraft type, which is a 737-800. Cruise profile is six, that's the cost index. Now, somebody asked me about how did I know it was six? Well, two reasons. One, a captain from Ryanair told me that that is what they do fleet-wide for Ryanair. And number two, you can go online and there are actual tables there that will show you what all the major airlines have for their cost indexes. Now going down, look at that. Departure runway is 3-4, arrival is 2-3, so we guessed that correct. For passengers we are 4, we have 1 ton of cargo half a ton up front and half a ton behind. And check the routes. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. All right, now what we need to do here is we need to save this flight. And then we need to generate the flight plan. <clears throat> and here's all the information. It's giving us a flight level of 320. Airtime is one hour and three minutes, and we have block fuel of 7,473 kilograms. And there's the routing. Now, once we've finished with SimBrief and have saved the flight plan, we can now bring that flight plan into our simulator, but we can also do something else with it. We can also bring it into an application called Navigraph. Now I've been asked to show how to do that. Well, here's the open Navigraph chart. First thing we need to do is to click on flights at the upper left click and then it says to show the active flights that you have saved if there aren't any then click new flight then there are three options manual input from file or from sim brief we're going to choose the from sim brief and there is the very latest sim brief flight that we saved so we click on that and there it is. There is the entire flight plan right there. Now while we have SimBrief open, let me show you a couple of features in this that I use and you may use them too. First of all, up here at the upper left at the start point, I left click and then left click on open the charts. If I click on taxi and then go down to where it says airport info, click on it, that brings in the airport information. There's a button to the right of that. If I click on that, then it appears saved at the bottom. It's a quick link. I'm also going to do that for stands and coordinates as well because those are going to be important for me as, as we go on. 
The next thing I'm going to need to put in there is our departure. And if you can see here at the top, it's got the um, Polax 5 Popper departure. So I click on SID, the standard instrument departure. Find the Polax 5P departure. And again, put a pin in it and there it is. By the way, this little icon to the left allows you to do an overlay. So if we do that, this is what comes up. So here you can see what the actual route would be for the departure. Now, having done the departure point, let's go over and do the same thing for our destination. So clicking on taxi for our destination, we put in the airport information and we put in also parking stands coordinates. We need to know those. The other thing we need, of course, is to put in the star. That's the, the standard approach. And here we've got, it says we're going to be using the LRUV for uniform for Bravo, the Elra for Bravo approach, and that would be this one. So put that, and it appears at the bottom. And we'll be using runway 23. So again, we'll put that in. And then let's put the overlay on and see what it looks like. Ah, this is interesting. This is the googly that we saw. Look at that. There's going to be our route. It goes all the way down the valleys and around the mountains to land at the airport. For those of you who are familiar with the Innsbruck approach, then you can see this is somewhat very similar. Right, the information is all in and we are now ready. Navigraph is set for use. Come on in, have a seat. We're getting ready to go down to the southern tip of New Zealand today. Now this was requested by Mr. Peter Bevington. He lives just outside of Wellington and he's the one who requested us to do this flight between Wellington and Queenstown. Now Queenstown is a very interesting little airport. The runway is less than 6,000 feet. It's also a thousand foot up in elevation and rather like Innsbruck there's a bit of a curve in the valleys to get to the active runway so we'll have to see how we do but here we are we are at stand 73 in Wellington the weather is overcast not the most brilliant of uh, days, but I am happy to report that my not only is Active Sky working wonderfully on both computers, but wide traffic is doing a superb job. There's, it's just superb. Now, this aircraft is one of the aircraft that wide traffic is placed all right in front of me wasn't that kind of them so when we leave we're going to be uh, have to do a little bit of a maneuver to get out we'll see right we're fueled up and the passengers are getting ready to come on so we need to turn on the power there's the batteries and there's the fuel pump and then we turn on the APU 
the auxiliary power unit that's what APU stands for it's in the tail of the aircraft and it's going to be generating 115 volts of electricity for us very shortly there the engine gas temperature the EGT is rising and uh, the other thing that's important is that when we need it we will be putting all of the compressed air that it generates into turning the turbines on the main engines they start spinning and that's how they start up here we go we're coming up we'll be as soon as that turns blue there we go good we now have 115 volts coming through on the bus so turn on the IRS so that we can locate ourselves that's the GPS turn on the galley so that we can start get a brew emergency exit lights no smoking fasten seat belts and there is the left and the right window heat the left and the right probe and there's the electrical pumps these two lights indicate that the forward service hatch is open and also this what it says here equipment that indicates the air stairs are down so then we'll turn on the APU bleed and in a moment you're gonna hear there's that rush of air that's the compressor in the APU pushing all of that air throughout the cabin now we're going to be following Air New Zealand NZ603 now they're an Airbus 320 we're a little bit bigger than they are but we're going to be following that exact same route now it's time to do the programming of the FMC the flight management center here we're checking here that the navigation data is all current and we go to our position and our location here is NZWN as the airport and according to the coordinates we should be 4119.8 and 174.48.6 there we are and so we'll put that in and now we're set to go now for the route we put in over here we put in NZWA no, WN and we're going to go to NZQN our flight number is Ryanair 186 now we go down to page two and here's where we start to put in the information our first one our first waypoint is sabda s-a-b-d-a s-a-b-d-a -A. then we take yankee 622 yankee 622 and that will take us to MESIX after that we take the Hotel 159 
until we get to Charlie Hotel. Then we take the Yankee 266. Until we get to L Rub. And that is our run. So we activate that and we're ready to go on that. Now, departure. Aircraft is departing from runway 34. So we'll put 34 in. We're going to be taking the Polax 5P. That's this one. At our arrival, we are anticipating runway 23. And we're coming in on the RNAV Zulu 23. And we're using the LRUB 4B. And we put that in. Now we'll have a look at the legs and see how the legs look. So we'll see the flight plan, so we'll click onto that. And then we'll just step through this looking for any kind of discontinuity. And there's every one of the waypoints around that little squiggly line that will bring us right onto the active runway. So we've got a good plan. Now we'll put our fix in. N Z Q N and we will be four miles, ten miles, and thirty miles. Now we'll go to our descent. And that we'll put in the forecast. So we'll be putting in the altitudes is 200, 150, 100. The Q and H for our destination today is 1023. At 200, the descent is 272 at 27. And at 150, it is 271, 23. And at 100, it is 264 at 28. And then activate that. Now here's where we allow the computer to do all the calculations for us. The plan fuel, we are loaded with 7.5 tons of fuel. The reserves is 3,779 kilograms. The trip and taxi is going to take 3,029 kilograms. 
that is 6,808 kilograms or 6.8 for the whole plan. The reserves, it's close enough to 3.8, 3,779, well that's 3.8. Now I was asked how do we come up with all of the N1, N2 numbers? Well this is a computer. So we put in the information and then we ask it to do the calculation. So push that twice and it fills in the blanks for us. There's all of the information. Cost index is 6. Our cruising altitude is 320. And the cruise wind is 300 at 17, is the average. Transition altitude is 13,000 feet. And one limits. We'll do that. Take off. It's a long runway. We'll be taking off with flaps five. And then double push this, and it comes up with the center of gravity figure right there. Then all we have to do is look over here, and you can see there's the V1, there's the rotation speed, and there is the V2 and it's calculated everything according to the information that we put in. Right, so now I'm going to put all of that information into our course. We'll be departing on runway 34, so that's going to be 341. It's going to be our heading. Our cruise altitude, we need to put that in for the pressurization. And that's going to be 32,000 feet for pressurization here. Our landing altitude, our landing elevation I should say, at uh, Queenstown is 1,171 feet. So that's close enough to 1,200 since this goes in blocks of 50. So 1,200 in there. Max speed is 148 for takeoff. All right, let's see if we have a good plan. We have green lights. Very good. Flight continuity is on. Everything is checked across the board. We're looking good. Right, we are now set to close up. Everybody's on board. They're getting all of their complimentary champagne and caviar. <laughs> As if. <laughs> oh, well, that's so cruel, isn't it? So, we'll close everything up. Stairs up and hatch closed. We're looking for these lights to go off. There's the hatch and the stairs are up. Good. All right, attendance. We're going to move and go to the active, but before we do that, we need to get our clearance. So we'll tune in and request our IFR departure clearance. Wellington, clearance delivery, Ryanair 186, IFR 2, Queenstown, ready to copy.
Ryanair 186 is clear to Queenstown Airport as filed. Fly runway heading. Climb and maintain. 11,000. Departure frequency as 119.3. Squad 5576. Ryanair 186 clear to Queenstown Airport as filed. Fly runway heading. Climb and maintain. 11,000. Departure on 119.3. Squad 5576. Ryanair 186, bring that correct. Contact ground on 118.8. 118.8, and we'll get our clearance to taxi. Wellington ground, Ryanair 186, we're Delta, ready to taxi IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at runway 34, using taxiway. Bravo, Bravo, 8, Alpha, Alpha. Contact tower on one two zero point zero when ready. Taxiing hold short runway three four using taxiway Bravo Bravo eight Alpha Alpha one one Ryanair one eight six. Right, we have our clearance. We're ready to do our departure. First thing what we need to do is we're going to start engine number one today and we're going to do it from our park position so i'm going to switch the generator switch to number one and then i'm going to turn off the air conditioning so that we can push all the energy into the engine number one over here the start valve has opened low pressure light will go off in just a moment we're looking here for 24 on the N2 and then I'm going to bring in the fuel there it is I'm bringing in the fuel to start engine number one over here we're looking at this we're making sure that the engine gas temperature is rising nicely there low pressure light has gone off we're, we're good on that Fuel flow is showing 0.29, that's good. And there's the engines. And up here, we have 115 volts. Switching now to engine number two, and we'll start engine number two. The start valve has opened. looking here for this to get and rise to 24 there we go and this is starting to build up the engine gas temperature in engine number one is looking good it's coming along good the low pressure oil pressure light has gone out We'll be looking for 115 volts. There's engine number two, it's cranked up. We have 115 volts, good. We have engine start is good. So now we're going to switch to the generators in the main engines. And over here, Turn on the air conditioning and turn off the APU just like that. Right. Generators are on check. Probe heat is on check. Anti ice is not needed at the moment. Isolation valves auto close is correct. Engine start levers idle detent. Flight deck doors closed and locked. So, recall, check, flight controls, check, we're going to go to flaps 5, check, stabilizer trim is check, Auto brake 
set to RTO, green light on flaps. Speed brake is down, detent. Ground equipment is all clear. We are now set for taxi. Right. Taxi lights are on. Attendance, we're getting ready to move. Last check. Looking good. Now we have to make a very tight left turn here. That's the procedure here. So, brake off. We're about 
about to take off, start the clock, advance power to N1, looks good, push the toga button, Rotate. And 
at El Rub Waypoint. That puts us at about 50 nautical miles from the airport. I've cancelled the IFR, we're coming in under VFR conditions. The weather is clear, it's good. The uh, sky is clear. We're descending normally, we're on track. And so far, everything is looking good. So, come on in. Let's have a go and see if we can do that RNAV approach.
still on course and at the proper descent rate.
coming right in between. Shut down. 
cleanup is complete. Lights are off. Stairs are opening and going down. All right. Okay, now, and APU off, and battery off, shutdown is complete. Well, we made it. A little bit iffy there on that final part coming into land, but... Um, there's an awful lot of terrain right around and one thing I did notice is that several other aircraft did missed approaches but Ryanair we got in <laughs> and I didn't break any of the crockery either I think I did all right well there you have it we're here in Queenstown New Zealand I hope that you have a good time and welcome to the South Island.